Hi guys, so today we're going to be trying a bunch of different new products. I have two ideas for two sets of nails, so we're gonna do, yes, both hands today. I've had a couple things for a little bit that I've been dying to try, and I just don't know when I'm gonna have a good opportunity to use it, so I figured, you know what, let's do some hopefully really cool nails today, a Valentine's Day set, and then a different really sparkly rhinestone set and just kind of like hang out, try some new stuff, so watch some things, you know, just kind of chill. So obviously I have a little bin here. I have some new gel sets. And like I said, two full different sets. So I'm just going to start on the first set that I'm going to do and I'll just show you the new stuff and talk about it as I go. So let's start with some new patty gel shades by Evie or Long Hair Pretty Nails. She dropped some nudes and I picked up a few and so let's swatch these. I got Pixie Latte, which looked like a really pretty sparkly lighter brown mocha marshmallow, which white sparkly love, and then a nude. And I think there was six in the new collection, but these were just my favorite. So these are what I got. In my last video, I believe that I mentioned we had a really big storm as, you know, many of you did. And these poly gels were delivered during that storm somehow. It might have been like the night before it got really cold or something like that. But needless to say, these sat in my mailbox in like five degree temperatures. And so, you know, if you for some reason ever wondered, does poly gel freeze? The answer is no, but it gets extremely firm. I'm not even gonna lie. I was a little bit stressed for a second. But after grabbing them out of my mailbox, they did go back to their normal firmness for what I could feel just holding the bottle. Here is the shade Nude, which I really like. It almost has like a pinky tone to it. I feel like it'd be like perfect for me. Next up we have Mocha. Here is Mocha and I will compare it to Nude. This one's a lot more of like a more muted, like dustier pink brown. And now Pixie Latte. You guys know, of course, that the ones I'm going to be most excited for are going to be the ones with little itty bitty glitters or some shimmer. And look at that. So pretty. Whatever type of glitter she used in this, it kind of looks almost like a crushed diamond type effect. And last but not least, Marshmallow. I have a feeling this one's going to be my favorite, but We'll have to see. There is Marshmallow. Let's just ignore the hair. That is totally on me, but it is so beautiful. Everything side by side, and I'll put a little white behind just so you guys can see if you wanna see without like my background interfering. They're pretty much the same. Again, look at that one. This one I thought was gonna be my favorite, but I think it's this one. This one's beautiful too, but it's a little bit more subtle. It kind of looks like when you're outside and there's snow, but the sun is still shining and the snow looks sparkly. That's kind of how this one looks. Ah, decisions, decisions. For my design, this one I think would work best, but this one is what my heart is wanting me to use. Maybe we'll do a little ombre. Here are the crusty nails we will be starting with. I did a failed set yesterday that I had to take off, so they're looking a little extra rough, which is fine, we'll fix it. So I'm gonna use the Jello Jello today because we're using poly gel and poly gel does not soak off easily, even though I am probably going to wear these nails for a little bit. I know last time, I said I wanted to wear the last draw my nail sets for a little bit, but after I finished them They ended up a little fragile and I didn't want to break them. They weren't really like very practical So I ended up popping those off so that I could save them and I put on a different set and I had done some Intense prep for it because I knew I wanted to keep these on for just a little bit to have something on I feel not put together whenever I don't have any nails on. And just with the nature of making videos, I end up with nails not on a lot of the time and that makes me sad because I started doing this because I love doing my nails and loved having nails and wearing them. So I was like, I'm just gonna at least put some nails on. So I did some like intense prep for the Jello Jello and I truly only put it like in the center and those nails would not come off. I did a whole thing on my car and I hit those nails so hard so many times and they did not pop off. Like I was so rough that I ended up bruising my hands on if you can see that one there and then that one's kind of intense there but the nails totally fine it hurt the couple times I smacked them pretty hard but it stayed on and then when I tried to actually take them off 
I ended up having to cut and soak them off even though I did have the Jello Jello underneath. So I feel like it's a really hard thing to find like a good medium for it. So I'm going to try today to put it over most of the nail and only leave a tiny border of it. That way I can lift up an edge and put the remover and hopefully have it come off because just the bit in like the center, it was like a regular base coat. See, and I like bruised. You can see right there, like my nail a little bit, trying to get them off. Gonna do stiletto today. So sometimes whenever I am gluing on tips, especially over say like a base coat, they don't really stick that well. So something that can help is just putting a little bit of acetone on the edge of that tip. And that will just help the glue stick to it better and faster. Just make sure you put it in the right place because these are a lot harder to just take right off if you put it on crooked. I'm talking about myself, by the way. <laughs> I do want to shape up these tips a bit, but I'm first just going to put a, another base gel on top of it because this is a peel off base coat. I think if I file a bit too much without it being protected by something else, the gel might start to peel up a little bit. So I just wanna put something over and sort of like bridge that gap between my real nail and the peel off before I mesh the tips or anything like that. I have them all shaped up now, so we are ready to roll with getting the poly gel on. I think it's probably best for my nail art if most of the nail is white and then I am going to just put a little bit of this down at the bottom, kind of like a really subtle and short ombre. Hopefully that'll look good, but I just gotta use both. Okay, just a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna just try to cover most of my natural nail. Okay, it's ending up a little bit of a longer ombre, but ombres with this formula is so easy. The more I work with this formula, the more I like it. It's not the type of sticky that's like stringy. Like I can just pull this down and it does that like really nice ombre without pulling like, you know, like specific like little chunks. There we are, I'm gonna cure this now. I may end up going back and putting a tiny bit more on that nail, but we'll just have to see how these ones turn out. The thumb is usually the easiest to work on for me just because it's bigger than the rest of the nails. So I try to wait until I do the other nails to really decide stuff like that because what can be done on the thumb and on the biggest nail easily might not be able to be done as easily on the other nails. These are looking a little bit thin, so I'm gonna go back and just do another tiny, tiny little layer. Now that that first layer is on there, this is just gonna like build up the nail a little bit. All right, that seems like a nice base, a nice height for that bottom layer. So now let's add the white. Super excited to put this on top. Everything's going pretty smooth so far. I feel like the white is a bit softer than the other poly gels. This is the only one that I feel like has a slightly different texture. It's not a bad thing, it's just a observation. Whenever I get to this area and I'm really wanting to blend it, I grab some base coat on my brush and base coat really helps kind of like melt the poly gel and really thin it out. It makes it glide really well so that you can do things like ombre. And it's also really helpful if a poly gel is really sticky. Okay, I have everything on now. I'm going to just wipe the sticky layer off and let's get to filing. Okay, we're super dusty right now, but this is after shaping. Love how they came out. Okay, gonna give a good white. This is going to be our base for some Valentine's Day nail art. So let me show you what we're gonna use. 
If you remember a little while ago, I tried out some Korean gels and I absolutely love them. And Zillabu ended up seeing the video and asked me if I wanted to try more of them. And absolutely I do. So I have the ice cream neon collection, which this is more of like a pastel neon, as you can see. And the box is so cute. Literally the cutest box I've ever seen. Literally dying over it. And then the Ylang Ylang collection in beige. And I am so excited to use these because if you remember that video, you'll know I absolutely loved those gels. They were jelly and the packaging's really nice and the gels were great quality. So I'm so excited to use these. I've been dying to use these ones, of course, the colorful ones, but also I'm really excited to have some really good nude gels and they are very much the like syrupy consistency that a lot of Korean gels have. I do have to show you the little details on this though. Isn't this so cute? Like they really kept with like the whole theme throughout. This side has like a little nutrition label, so cute. And then here are the colors. I'll show you the actual bottles in a second. And then the side of this one pretty much just shows all of this. I can't read this, so that's all I can really say about it. Here are what the bottles look like. They are matte and honestly very, very true to the color that's actually in the bottle, like dead on, which I absolutely love and really appreciate. Also, these feel just as high quality as the previous set that I have tried. Wow, I'm very thankful that they sent me these. They are so expensive, but they're worth it. And that's so annoying because that means I'm absolutely going to look at buying some more. And then for the other set, these are the nudes. I would say they're slightly less accurate for how they look on the nail versus the bottle, but still pretty accurate. I feel like nudish shades are a lot harder to make like exact for bottles, but the top is matte and it has like a nice little gradient as well as there are some shimmery shades in this. And in these, the glitter is very chunky. Like you would need a pretty thick top coat in my opinion for them. It's definitely one that when you put on and even if you let it level out for a little while, you're gonna feel it. It's like very coarse. Not gonna be using these nude ones on this set, but I'm going to be using them in the set for the other hand. Here are all the swatches. They are so pretty. This one buckled up a little bit and that's my fault because I put it in the light with like four seconds to spare. So it started curing and then stopped and then started curing again. Anyway, I love them. Honestly, I was worried a lot of these would look the same just because of the bottles and like how light of colors they are, but they definitely don't. And I'm super excited to have some good nudes. And then of course, these are just beautiful. I feel like I don't even need to say that about the rainbow ones, we all know. I'm going to blur the glitter ones a little bit because I feel like that gives you a better idea of what they look like in my opinion. So that's how they look like there. And then something else I'm about to open and try are these new brushes from e -Nail Couture. And then let's take these off. Oh, I was hoping I could do it in like one swoop. So here is what we are working with. Super excited to have these liners. I feel like with like liner brushes, especially when you're trying to do nail art, I feel like you can never have enough. Like don't get me wrong, I have a bunch, but I always want more. I'm not sure about you guys, but you know what these colors reminded me of, especially this time of year? Candy hearts. So that's what I'm going to do as the nail art for this. I'm gonna try to do all over candy hearts. I think that would be really cute. So let's get to that. I picked out these colors for them. These colors are also gonna be really good around like spring and Easter. But let's make my palette. So first I'm gonna put down a base gel to kind of like clean out the color or use it to help glide or anything like that. And then purple, pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So I'm actually going to start with a white to put as a base for everything. While I'm sure that these will show up, I feel like it'll just make it so I only have to do one layer of the color gel for sure and not have to do two layers and bulk it up. So let's get started. Okay, I'm trying to think about which way to do this. Wait, hold up, am I forgetting to like put a base coat on? I am. Okay, actually I'm going to put a base coat on as a base to our nail art just so it all stays where it's supposed to. Look at how pretty the poly gel is. I love those two glitters together. Then I'm gonna wipe this off super, super well. So I have this like one piece of something that I just can't get rid of. Okay, now we can get started with the nail art. I'm not sure how big I wanna make these hearts. Not too small, cause these are a bit longer. 
so I have the room for it. That one's a little too skinny. It needs to be like more plump on the sides. Let's try again. Okay, it's a start. All right, all right, that one could be okay. I feel like I just need to touch up a little bit. It's fine, I can touch it up. Okay, that one's cute. Success, one down, probably like 10 to 15 more to go. I have to like put my hand like a weird, okay, there we go. I want the hearts to look scattered and so I wanna do them at different angles, but for some reason doing a heart at like an angle, my brain doesn't wanna do it. It wants to do it straight. It does not wanna do like an angle. Now that I put that one next to it, I feel like the hearts in general need to be bigger. I feel like it's gonna look like too many. Okay, let's make this one bigger. Luckily, that's a fairly easy thing to do. I'm also glad that I decided that before I did a bunch of them. Uh-oh. <laughs> But it's okay, I think we all saw this coming. We all knew I was gonna struggle with this. But what I will say is I really tried lately to start thinking smarter, not harder with especially stuff like this because if I keep doing the same thing over and over and over and it's not working, I don't know what makes me think it's gonna just suddenly start working. So I'm gonna change my tactic and start off with perhaps like a already rounded tool. Thought this one would be okay, but I might even need to get a bigger one. That way I can just, you know, do a nice, two circles and connect them, but I think this one needs to be a little bigger. I also think that perhaps I may need to try using a different white gel because while that other white gel is super opaque, it really stays in place and I kind of need something that's going to spread just like a tiny bit so that it can come off of my tool easier. All right, does that look a little better? I think it does, but can I do it again? Let's see. I think part of it was I needed to change the gel. I think that potted one is a lot better for like details and stuff like that, not necessarily for like a base or a large area. Success, I think I have it down now. Now that the outline for everything is done, I'm really excited to start coloring everything. So I'll grab this out and I think I'll probably start with pink. So pretty. And I'm just trying to make sure I cover all the white. Something that I really love about this brand's gels is that they level out by themselves really, really nicely. So like you can obviously see the white on all of this. Those don't really level out but these ones do. If it'll level out or not also can depend on like how you apply it. So with the other one applying it with just like a liner brush probably won't make it the most even, but you can just see that this will just kind of like level out on its own, which I really like. I wanna try to evenly space all the colors, but I do have six that I'm trying to put. So one, two, three, four, five, six, probably about there. Also, I'm very much liking these brushes. This is such a good cleanup brush. Okay, so cute so far. I say we do the yellow next. I guess we'll start maybe here. So now let's do all of the little writings on there. I don't wanna say this slipped my mind, but I don't really think I considered how small this is going to need to be written. So we'll see. I'm taking out two different red gel liners just in case one works better than the other. I wanna have options because I'm a little scared. <laughs> I haven't even thought about what I wanna put on there, like in terms of phrases or anything like that. I'm also not sure if I'm going to outline them or anything. Okay, no more procrastinating for me. Let's just try it. Okay, I can do it. It's fine, it's fine. Looks like a Halloween version of the candy heart. Just doing that was extremely difficult. I am so nervous. I can't believe I have so many of these to do. I have this teeny, teeny, tiny brush. I'm gonna see if that's easier because sometimes brushes that have really long hairs are actually a lot easier to do straighter lines, but I'm trying to do more curved lines. So that's just not good. I don't think I could fit everything. I need to do things so small. Okay, that kind of got it. I feel like that needs to be gone over. 
Okay, I have hope. That one still wasn't good, but now at least I found a brush to do it with. I just needed like a pretty short skinny one. I'm just like here scrolling on my phone the whole time trying to find phrases to put on that are like three or four letters because I cannot fit more than that. There's no way. Okay, only one or two more in the final stretch and then I'll be almost done with this. I don't think I'm going to outline these because I feel like that might just be too much, but I'm gonna probably try one just to make sure that I don't want to. I feel like it might look better outlined, but I don't know, like, is it worth it? I'm so glad we're done with that part. I think now I'm going to just outline one in black just to see. Okay, honestly, I feel like outlining it really makes it all come together. So um, I guess I'll do that now. I really was not thinking that this set was gonna take me that long, but that's on me. I'm also not sure what would give me that idea that I am like five times faster than um, I am. I love getting like Valentine's Day decor as regular home decor. So I don't know if anyone else has been out like looking at the Valentine's Day stuff, but it's been so cute this year. There's been a lot less like red type stuff. I mean, of course there's always gonna be like red for Valentine's Day, but I've been seeing a bit more like candy heart type Valentine's Day stuff, which is my favorite. It's like the pastel, like this. This is my favorite, opposed to like a normal red pink color scheme. I love like the pastel candy heart aesthetic. For holiday stuff, I'm sure you guys see that everything comes out so early. Like they started putting out Valentine's Day stuff before Christmas even ended. And if you want the good holiday stuff for like any holiday, you have to get it right when they put it out. Because when it's like towards the actual holiday, all of that stuff, already disappears. I learned my lesson once one Halloween and I was like, oh, I'll get that stuff later. And then mid-October, there was like no Halloween stuff to be seen at my home goods. It was tragic. So this year for the Valentine's Day stuff, I went right after Christmas and I definitely got good stuff. Okay, here we are. I am so excited to top coat this. I'm gonna use this top coat. I think it's called like Veda Vada. And this is from one of you guys. I got this in my PO box. I've been using this Valentino top coat, but I decided I do not like it. It never wants to stick to anything and it separates. So I'm gonna stop using it and I'm gonna try this one. We have officially finished this set. Now let's move on to this set. So for these nails, I'm just going to put on some full cover tips as I normally would because the main attraction for this is going to be the gel and nail art and stuff like that. So I'm just going to speed on right past this. There I have my tips all on. So for this hand, my inspiration is going to be similar to these. I have seen people do these nails lately and to my knowledge for what I could find when I was watching these videos is they're called Korean glass nails. And I just absolutely love how they have kind of like the random chunky gems and there's like no rhyme or reason to them. I think that's such a cool idea. And I feel like just like the style with the ombre is so pretty. So I wanna do that, but obviously on my longer nails. So I'm going to start off with this gel as a base. This will be like a translucent, soft looking base color. You might have noticed that I changed the shape and stuff like that. I just felt like the other shape wasn't gonna like fit the vibe. So for the ombre, I'm wanting to do like a couple different cat's eyes to really give it like a lot of different dimension. So let's see. So I'm gonna start off with this like purple one. I'm gonna be doing an ombre. So I'm gonna just start it kind of like here. Will today be the day I'm actually able to like capture how this looks? Although if I was smart, I probably would have ombreed it before I did that. Okay, now it's been ombre. Let's, okay, let's try again. Took me a second, but I think I have it down for how I'm going to do it. So a decent layer for this. Up to here, perfect. I know I need to get one of those brushes that are for ombre -ing. I'm always shocked when I feel like I have so much stuff, but then I don't have like a specific tool that I need that isn't even that specific. Like you would think I would have an ombre brush, but I do not. Oh, look at that. I can do it through the glass. Okay, I love how that's looking and it's gonna look so much cooler in the sun, which I'm actually gonna finish these during the sunlight today. So we will, well, I don't know about sunlight. It's raining out, but I will at least finish them with some daylight. 
this one on now. This one is similar to that one, but not the exact same. This one has more of like a greenish tint, which might be kind of hard to see initially. I know I used to have a ton of trouble with cat's eye and I'm not saying I'm not struggling a little bit with moving these around, but I feel like I have like a new obsession with it. It's just so pretty. If you guys know any cat's eyes that are like a lot brighter, maybe a bit more rainbowy, let me know. Cause I want them. A lot of the time they have a little bit of like a darker base, which is fine. I just want like some like neon ones. Do they make neon cat's eye? Again, if you know, let me know. I really want you guys to be able to see better. How fun. These are looking so pretty. Don't worry, I'll clean up all the edges and stuff at the end, but wow, they're so pretty. So now I'm gonna use this one. This is like a really pretty like blue and I'm going to really try to push the pieces more in this center part because I feel like I have a lot of dimension here, but then kind of here is a little lacking. So I want more on that. Trying to use like references for really short nails onto long nails can be hard sometimes because I'm pretty sure that on most of those inspirations, it goes down to about here, but then it ends up not looking right. But you know, I can't not do my long nails. So I'm gonna actually start it quite a bit lower. So I'm gonna mainly focus it like that here on these like center parts and do a thicker layer. And then I'm gonna feather it towards the top and the bottom. I don't wanna put a ton at the top right there because like I said, I don't really want like it covering up this top part and I don't really want it covering up the bottom either. Like I want those different colors to show. I think that's how it'll look the best. Luckily with cat's eye, you can almost ombre it with the magnet, but a lot of the time it does kind of have like an underlying color. So that's kind of just what I'm trying to feather out. Might have a little too many layers to be able to do it like this. Okay, so look at that, how pretty. I'm gonna just wipe all of these off now. Looking a little chunky, but again, I'm gonna just file the edges. I do want to add a tiny bit more to this. I know you're like, um, haven't you already added everything? Yeah, but I want to put just some regular glitter over also. So I'm trying to just see which one of these will look best, which one will match the best and give it like a nice little tint. I kind of feel like it looks a little bit like a night sky. So I feel like adding a bit of a chunkier glitter will kind of make it look, you know, a little bit more like that. And I think I'm going to go with this more like pinky one. We'll see anyway, I'm going to try it first. However, I don't want a ton of it. I just want to add a little bit. So I'm going to wipe some out and then mix it with some base coat. So that way it's not as concentrated. I can just like thin it out a little bit and have a little bit more control over like what's on the brush. And I'm putting this over the whole nail, even the little bottom part. Then after I put this glitter on, I'm just going to quickly clean up the edges. That way they don't look too bulky. Gonna try really hard not to like file like inward where you can see, but I just feel like they need just a little bit of refining. We are almost done, I promise, but now let's put some gems on. I'm not quite exactly sure what's gonna look best, but I just wanna go through all of these cool new ones that I have. So I wanna start with these. They are like translucent, but still have a reflect in them. And there are multiple different shapes. I love, of course, these ones. This one has some darker ones, which I think is gonna look absolutely perfect on these nails. Maybe those too, I don't know. But I just love these and I love that they're translucent and I love the shapes of them. And then these, and these might look plain, but they are actually color changing. And I wanna say rhinestones, I'm just gonna say gems or whatever, cause they're mostly cut in gem shapes, charms, whatever. And they react with light. So I'm just going to point my little, can you see? this lamp here and turn it on and you guys can see it change color. Hopefully, hopefully this will be enough. How cool are those? I got pink and dark pink. They kind of look the same to me. <laughs> I've had these for a while actually. I just always see them and I never think to use them because they always look clear, but they're still really cool. I don't know if they'll go best on these nails, but I just want to show you cause how fun. Then there's these new ones from Enail Couture and they're like pre-done flowers, which I absolutely love. I feel like this type of stuff would be really good for actual nail text because this would cut down on like acrylic flowers and stuff like that if this is what the client is looking for. I wasn't thinking I was gonna use these, but there is this, I don't even know, like tannish one that I feel like could look really good. Then there's these, which I should take out so we can see better. Here are these. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I do not think I like these. Maybe these heart ones would be okay, but I just don't know if I'm a 
fan of these. Probably use the heart ones at some point, but everything else, yeah, I just, I don't know. These are not my favorite. And then there's these bows, which I really like. I love how chunky they are. And again, I love that they're pre-done, especially like that one. Look at how big the rhinestone is on that one. So these aren't necessarily new, but I'm also pulling out these like bubble gems. They aren't like cut into rhinestone shapes, but instead just like a little dome. I feel like they will go well on this. And then potentially these, I feel like they could match. I don't know, I just wanna kinda of like get started and see what works. Cause I've never done this type of placement for rhinestones before. I'm gonna use my Kira Sky Bling It Gel. So I'm just gonna kinda of put a little bit here in the middle. Is that too big? It's like, is this how it's supposed to look? I know it's supposed to look like slight, maybe slightly chaotic and random. I just feel like naturally I do things chaotic, but I don't know about like controlled chaos type look. Is this heart too big? I do have other hearts, hold on. Perhaps these ones? I'm not super confident in this, but I'm gonna cure it. I think this is the vibe. I'm probably wrong though. I feel like really what's probably throwing me off is that these nails are long. I'm pretty sure that like the whole part of the style is that they're like short, but they do have like the chunkiness on them, but I did want to do longer. This wax pencil is not wanting to pick anything up today. I think I got the hang of it now. So let's finish these up a thousand years later. All right, now I'm going to just finally put on a top coat. I'm gonna put <laughs> my top coat on the top here and then the bottom. And then I'm gonna have to go through with a brush around everything else. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all this new stuff and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.